Hi, everyone. Welcome to this mini workshop on how to work with a pendulum. Whether you've never worked with one before and you're super curious, or you've worked with a pendulum, but you've gotten some funky answers, this is a great workshop for you. So thanks so much for being here and clicking on this video. Just a little bit about me before we get started. My name is Christine from Kyanite Psychic Services, and I'm a formally trained psychic reader and healer, as well as a psychic development teacher, a trans medium, and a professional musician. And you can find out more about me and my services on my website, which is kyanitepsychic.com. So a pendulum is an excellent divination tool. And it's really used in a whole bunch of different ways, but here we're looking at it um, as a vehicle for receiving yes or no answers. People do use it to read the energy of the body, the energy of spaces, et cetera. So that's absolutely possible. Um, in this workshop today, we're gonna learn how to hold a pendulum. That's the first thing, very important. How to choose a pendulum to work with, how to figure out how that pendulum communicates with you, and then how to read with it. And finally, I'm going to talk about building greater trust in the answers that you receive. You're going to need a couple things for this workshop. So first, of course, a pendulum. I'm looking for mine on my desk here, but, you know, a pendulum, maybe like this one. This is one made out of fluorite, uh, which I love, but they're made out of all different materials. And then you're also going to need a notebook and pen or pencil just to write down what you find out in this workshop. And finally, a bowl of stuff. <laughs> um, just a little bowl, doesn't matter, with some objects in it. And we're going to use that to determine how to hold the pendulum. So go ahead and get all of those things together. You can pause this video and then we'll get started. All right, so hopefully you have everything you need. Let's begin with how to hold a pendulum, starting with what hand, because that's not the same for everyone. And the hand that you use to hold it does greatly influence the answers that you receive. And I'll explain why in just a moment. So to determine what hand you're going to hold it with, we're going to use our bowl of stuff. So I'd like you to just take it and place it right out in front of you. Keep it as centered as possible, right? So it's not closer to one hand or the other probably guessing where we're going to go with this. But once you've got that bowl of stuff out in front of you, I'd like you to reach out and pick something up. Okay. Pick some apophyllite. Cool. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you picked up. What matters is what hand you instinctively, you know, without thought, used to pick up the thing. Because that hand is your receiving hand. So go ahead and write down in your notebook what hand you used and label that your receiving hand. That means that the other hand is therefore your sending hand. And think of it this way, or I like to remember it as I am receiving the energy of what I pick up, right? And then the other hand sends energy out. <laughs> There are some practices I just, you know, want to acknowledge that have it very fixed, like one hand is always sending, one hand is always receiving for everyone. That's not how I was particularly taught. And just for me, it doesn't resonate in the context of what we're doing here. So, you know, I just invite you to, you can, you can leave that for, you know, another time and, and that's okay. But just to be clear on that front, for all of us, you know, we may have different sending and receiving hands. And also to say they're not both the same, right? <laughs> All right, so you're always going to hold the pendulum with your sending hand. And again, it might be easy to remember as your subconscious mind is sending information through your hand to the pendulum right? Because one of the ways that we work with it is as a tool to connect to our subconscious. So for me, that's the left hand. I'm always going to hold my pendulum with the left hand. I didn't know this for years and I held it with my right hand and I got some funky answers. <laughs> so what happens if you do that? What happens if you hold it with the other hand, with your receiving hand? Well, you get the opposite answers, meaning if I were to hold it with my right hand and I got 
what looks like a yes, the answer is actually no. <laughs> so confusing. Let's not do that. So just write it down in your notebook, put it somewhere where you can remember what hand you're going to hold it with. Great. All right. So now that we have that out of the way, how do you hold it in that hand? You're going to use three fingers, your thumb, index, and middle finger. Why? Because of the polarities in each of your fingers. We want to make sure we're sending a total neutral charge through that pendulum so that the polarities in our fingers aren't influencing the response that we receive, right? Because if you were to hold it with two, whether it's the index or the middle, then you'd either be sending an overwhelmingly positive charge through or an overwhelmingly negative charge through. So all of our fingers have different polarities to them. I'll put the diagram that explains that up on the screen right now for you to see and just take some notes as you need, right? So looking at the diagram, we can see that the index finger and the ring finger hold a negative charge. The middle finger and the pinky hold a positive and the thumb a neutral. So that's why we use the first three, right? Because then you're getting neutral, negative, and positive. So holding it with three fingers looks just like this. You wanna make sure that they're all touching, right? So that you're getting a fully neutral charge of energy through your pendulum, right? And it felt a little weird for me at first because I used to hold it with two fingers. <laughs> Over time, it became more comfortable, just to say. And that was another reason why I was getting, you know, weird and accurate answers is just unpredictable because I was holding it like this and I was sending a negative charge through it all the time. Whoops. <laughs> all right. So now that we know how to hold it, <clears throat> I want to talk about choosing a pendulum to work with. And I might have a controversial answer here to that question. How do I choose one? You just choose one. <laughs> Pick whatever one you want to work with. You know, really, we're drawn to tools because we're supposed to work with them. So if you're in a metaphysical shop and you're like, oh, I want that one. That's the one. Don't question it. Right. Or if you're like, oh, I want all of them. <laughs> You could work with all of them if you want, not at the same time, that'd be a little crazy, but you could work with all of them. Um, you don't just have to have one that's your pendulum. You could have a pendulum collection. Um, don't let anyone limit your practice in that way. I know uh, I was told that you have to let it pick you and there's a process and all this complicated stuff. You can throw that out the window. <clears throat> so yeah, that might be controversial, but that's that's the truth. Um, the reason, well, there are a couple of reasons why, you know, it might be challenging to work with some pendulums or you've had that challenge in the past. And the biggest reason why is that you might not have taken the time to determine how you communicate with that pendulum. We're going to do that in this workshop. So that won't be an issue. Another reason why is that, you know, there might be a whole bunch of other people's energy on that pendulum. So say, you picked it up from the metaphysical shop, but you know, like 20 other people had their hands all over it before you took it home. And then there's the energy of the shop, the energy from when it was made. There's a lot, right? And perhaps you didn't clear that off. That really can influence the answers that are coming through. So <clears throat> first things first, when you're choosing a pendulum, pick what you want to pick. If you're bringing one home, you ordered it, you went to a store and got it, whatever. Please cleanse it. Whatever method you choose, there's no one right method. So smoke cleansing, putting it on some salts, uh, a spray, moonlight, running water, sunlight, pick whatever resonates with you and do it. And then also you're going to want to ground your pendulum metaphysically. So just like we ground our bodies in meditation. And if you've never done that before, I do have a grounding meditation. I'll link that above and in the comments. Um, but similarly, we can ground any of the tools that we work with. So pendulums, cards, right? Ground them because you want to clear off other people's energy. And if you're using them a lot in your practice, you want to clear, you know, in between each question or session of working with it. 
So just to walk you through that process real quick, you can just take the pendulum and you want to put it on the outside of your aura. Our aura is roughly about arm's length from us. So just put it a little bit further than arm's length away from you. I'll do that now. <clears throat> and then you're just going to want to close your eyes and get centered. And create a grounding cord. So a large hollow tube around the pendulum. Right? So you just kind of sense where it is in your space. Create that grounding cord. And then let it go all the way to the center of the earth. You can connect it there, however you see that, and activate it. I always like to see a button to push to activate it, but however that works for you, works for you. And just let other people's energy ground off of your tool, the energy of the shop or the store, the people that made it, anything else, right? And you'll know, look at that gentle nudge when you're ready to start working with it. Usually for me, the process is pretty quick, but let it take however much time it takes. So you've grounded your tool and now you're going to figure out how you communicate with it. So this is something you're going to want to do with every new pendulum that comes into your life. We're going to do that by um, using the polarity in our fingers once again. So the fingers that have a negative charge to them, that's the index or the ring finger. It's hard to hold that out by itself. Those fingers are going to show you no, what a no response would be from that pendulum. Right? Again, for every single tool, you want to try it out because it might be different. And then for our middle finger and pinky, that's going to show you yes, what a yes response is from that pendulum. And then finally, a maybe or a neutral response is going to be discovered by holding it over your thumb. So I tried a couple times to film holding it up in the air and this hand just, it, it just didn't want to be still. <laughs> so rather than looking ridiculous, I'm just going to kind of demonstrate what you would do and then you can go ahead and try it. <laughs> Pardon me. So just, you know, rest this hand. Um, rest your receiving hand rather on on the table and just hold out your index finger first so we're going to figure out what's no what's a no response take your pendulum remember three fingers and hold it over your index finger as such right yeah so i guess my hand's behaving a bit but you can see for me right now uh it's swinging towards and away or vertically right so for this pendulum, that's what no is if I'm asking a question. So just take a moment to determine for you and your pendulum what no is and write it down in your notebook. <clears throat> and then once you have, let's figure out what yes is. So I don't want to flip everyone off. <laughs> so we're going to use the pinky, right? You can hold out your pinky and determine what yes is. So again, I'll try my best to see if my left hand wants to be still holding this pendulum like up in the air. Oh yeah, we're, we're, we're doing it. So for this pendulum, you can see yes is horizontal, right? So take a moment to try that for yourself. Again, it's way easier if your receiving hand is resting on a table <laughs> and then write down what comes forward in your notebook. And then finally, what's neutral, right? What's maybe? Sometimes maybe is the answer. You can just hold out your thumb and find out what maybe is for that pendulum. So for me, maybe it's taking a while to sort itself out. Maybe it's a big circle, right, for this pendulum. So just go ahead and determine that for you, and then you can write it in your notebook. I know for me, sometimes with other pendulums, maybe it's like the super wobbly motion. <laughs> um, it's going to be different for everyone. All right, so now you're ready to read. I mentioned earlier that I like to ground my pendulum at the beginning of every session, and I would absolutely recommend that you do the same. 
when you start out time working with your pendulum, you know, it's great to ask some preliminary questions to get everything set up. The first one that you want to ask is, are we communicating, right? Is this pendulum swinging in response to me or something else going on in the space? Are we communicating? So just to demonstrate what that might be like, I'm going to take your three fingers again, hold your pendulum, try to keep still here, <laughs> holding it up in the air. Are we communicating? Right. And before I determined that side to side is yes, and I'm getting a pretty strong yes. So just go ahead and try that for yourself. And as you do, should you get no, it happens, right? Um, what I would recommend is regrounding, both just regrounding yourself and your tool. So just take the tool, pendulum, put it on the outside of your aura. So further than arm's length away from you. And first, just reground yourself, right? Um, release any energy that might be in the way of you communicating with the pendulum. So you can just speak that very intention out loud as you ground. Use any other energetic tools you like to clear your space. And then re-ground the pendulum. And when you're ready, when you're feeling lighthearted, right? We don't want to get into that pushing and forcing kind of state of mind. When you're feeling lighthearted and ready, try again. Ask it the question again, right? So that would be my recommendation, how to move forward. So you've asked, are we communicating? you got a yes. If you're working with your subconscious, right? Then you can just go ahead and start asking questions of your pendulum. That's to say, you know, when we use this tool, we're either, you know, working with us in the subconscious mind, or we can set the intention to communicate with our guides with the pendulum. So if you're communicating with you, go forth, right? If you're communicating with one of your guides, well, first you want to call that guide into the session, right? Just get centered, set your intention, whatever your practice looks like, call that guide in. And then you wanna ask that guide, are they here and swinging the pendulum? Yes or no? And see what response you get. Once you get a yes there, I like to follow it up with, are you able to answer the questions that I'm about to ask you? And that one's really important, I think, because not every guide is an expert in every area of life and experience here on earth. So you might be calling in a guide that just does not have the capacity to really answer your question. And, you know, that, that can be challenging. So I would recommend asking that. And then after that point, you know, ask away, ask all the questions you desire in a particular session. So I hope that's helpful to you. Let's practice a little bit just working with your pendulum. So I'll just, you know, put a little screen up. You can pause this video and just ask a few questions of your pendulum and just experience working with it. What I would recommend is to ask some fun questions first, right? If we, we get a new tool and we learn how to use it and then we just break out like the big questions, like what's the meaning of life? I'm just kidding. That's not a yes or no question. <laughs> But if you ask the big questions, that have a lot of charge or pressure or weight behind them first, um, that just gets a lot of expectation going in your space. It's better to just start light, right? Light and fun, and then go from there, kind of up up the, the weight of the question as you move through your session. I don't say that you have to do that every time, but when it's a new tool or a new practice, it's something that I would recommend. Um, so go ahead, pause this video and ask, ask away. Okay. So I hope you had fun asking some questions of your pendulum and wrote down what came forward. Let's talk about ways to build trust in the answers that you receive. Super important. The number one thing in my experience and perspective is to ask the question once and then leave it be. 
don't ask it 50 times or over and over and over and over and over again. And I'm laughing a little bit because uh, I've totally done this, I've done this more than once. I've done it an embarrassing amount of times. <laughs> we'll just say that, right? The act of you asking over and over and over again shows that you do not have trust. It also, you know, shows that you're wanting to manipulate <laughs> uh, the energy around the question to get the answer that you want out of it. All of that's not beneficial, right? So if you're looking at how to build trust in working with this tool, just ask one question once. Notice the answer, leave it, <laughs> right? That's my number one piece of advice there. And, you know, if you find that you're, you're asking it 50 times, just laugh it off and don't do it again. <laughs> okay. The other thing that I want to say is notice the energy behind the responses that you receive. There can be a lot of interesting, subtle communication that you can have with your pendulum. Meaning, you know, sometimes you might get a huge no. <laughs> like, like, is this food beneficial to eat? No, <laughs> don't eat the cookies. Um, and sometimes you might get a really subtle response. So in the context of what you're asking, right, notice how the bigness or smallness of the, the motion plays into the answer. How does that uh, enrich the answer that you're getting? And then also too, um, and this is for working with guides, communicating with your guides using a pendulum, you might find that different guides are going to swing the pendulum with more or less force or in different ways. For example, I have um, a guide that I work with that mainly interfaces with my Akashic records, right? That's the subject of another video. Anyhow, this guide, when they come in, um, the pendulum gets kind of wobbly and shaky, like the chain will get really shaky. And it only happens with them, but it's it's how I know, okay, you're, you're here and you're communicating. Versus if I'm communicating with my subconscious, right? I find that the um, motions are, I guess, more understated. And then I have some other guides where the motions are always huge, <laughs> enthusiastic. So, you know, as you pay attention to these nuances, that only builds greater trust in working with this tool and in the answers that you receive and also in your connection with spirit, right? Third thing that I want to say about this is grounding. I know we just talked about that, but, you know, grounding your tool, grounding yourself, getting grounded and centered before you begin a session will really help you to be in a greater trust with the information that comes forward. You know, if you're running a million errands or you're all over the place or doing X, Y, Z, and then you sit down, boom, going to use the pendulum. Uh, that's not really an environment that's going to cultivate clarity and trust, right? So just, just take your time and create loving, quiet time and space to use this tool. So those are the things that really came, you know, from my heart to share with you all about building trust and also just practice over time working with this tool and in different contexts, right? Asking all different types of questions, uh, you know, that's also a great way to build your rapport with this and any metaphysical tool that you're working with. So I hope that you enjoyed this workshop, that you got a lot out of it, and that it's positively impacted your practice, giving you more confidence in working with the pendulum. So please do share uh, any feedback, comments, uh, how it's helped you. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below this video. And I also want to let you know that there are other ways that I'd love to support you on your journey of psychic and spiritual development. I do offer several four-week classes, most notably one that centers upon working with your guides and building your own spiritual team. So I'll put a link to that class below. You can find out more about it. And I do also offer one-to-one -one sessions, both readings and healings, and also mentorship. So if there's an area of your practice that you're looking to strengthen, please do reach out to me. I would love to be of support to you. 
thank you so much for spending time with me today. And if you enjoyed this video and you're watching it via YouTube, please do give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. I love to share content focused on psychic and spiritual development. And I look forward to working with you again in the next video.